Hello guys, and welcome back to another CAFCAST! Today we are playing something brand new, and we're trying something brand new. Today we're taking a look at Fallout Shelter on the iPhone! That's right guys, I bought all the cables and bits and pieces that we needed to be able to play iPhone games and iOS games on the CAFCAST, which I think is pretty exciting, and I hope you guys agree. The reason that I'm doing it? Essentially, Fallout Shelter was just so much fun that I wanted to share with you guys the vault that I've created. I thought that it would be quite a, a nice thing to do to start off with, but I think for you to appreciate kind of what I've done, it makes quite a lot of sense for us to go through the game. So what we're going to do is go through the tutorial so you guys can see exactly how this game works. It's completely free on the App Store right now, and I'll talk to you about things that you can pay for in the game a little bit later on, but essentially you don't need to pay a thing. And it's still a really fun, enjoyable experience, and definitely something that's going to tie us over until Fallout 4 comes out, because my god am I playing that game. It's going to be awesome. So we're going to head over to the vault list, vault list, I can talk, on the top right hand side, and hit new vault at the top there. And we're going to go with 467, sounds like a good number, we're going to create that vault, which is pretty exciting. Now... If you're ready, we'll just read through this brief introduction. It's actually quite a clever way of doing it. Congratulations! Vault Tech has selected you as the overseer of Vault 467. The vault keeps people safe from the dangers of the wasteland. As overseer, your job is to expand and maintain the vault whilst keeping your dwellers safe and happy. Each room has a special attribute it uses, which I'll explain more about in detail a little bit later on. Assign dwellers with the best special to make them happy and produce extra resources. Vortec will give you a daily record of how well you're doing. And that's it. Pretty much, there's a basic tutorial that we'll go through to show you how the game works. But essentially, it's like a vault management system. So we get to create one of the vaults that were made before the Great War. Uh, and and the, the war has happened. Everything is completely blown up. And it's our chance now to make a vault and to have people join us in this vault to try to make a really nice little civilization uh, type of thing that we've got going on here. It is it is a fun little game. So uh, here we go. Welcome to your new vault overseer. Let's see some basic concepts. We need to build a room. Power generator is required and we're going to slap that in there and we need dwellers to be able to run this, this uh, place because the way this works essentially is you have uh, dwellers that work in each of these individual rooms. So we can look at the information about each of these dwellers. Brian Clark here, the legendary Brian Clark, uh, actually can be uh, moved directly into the power room that we just built to start creating power. So we'll drag him along like this, as you can see. And then we've also got another person here who's also going to be dragged in there as well. Might be that actually she gets used for something else later on, but it's just giving you a demonstration and a tutorial. So we can see the vault door has opened. And our couple of uh, people here have uh, headed into the elevator and are heading down to the newly constructed power generator room, which is pretty cool. As you can see, they just kind of get to work. What can I say? I'm great at my job, he says, because he's in the right room for his task. reason that we know that is essentially because, if we just double tap on this room here, Nicole and Brian, uh, we can do this rush thing that it's talking about now, which we'll do in a... Actually, we have to do it now. So I'll talk about that in a bit more detail once we've done a little rush here. Uh, this is essentially a way of getting resources quicker, um, but it has a chance of going wrong and failing, so do bear that in mind. Uh, we've successfully completed our first rush and collected some caps. So now we've got to build a diner, which goes there, and we've also got to build a water treatment plant, which goes there. Bam. Done. Perfect. Okay. So we've got some more dwellers that have shown up at the door, and now we have free roam of the game, which is fantastic. So basics basic basic basics you can see that we have this SPECIAL the same way that the actual fallout game works um, and each of these stats work to build different things if I actually click on the rooms that I'm looking at here the power generator room requires S which is strength makes sense lifting heavy nuclear waste I guess I don't know um, water treatment requires P diner requires A and then to actually live in the living quarters or to make babies requires C uh, which is, I guess, charisma or charm, maybe I don't know. Um, but male and female live, uh, dwellers that live inside the same uh, the same living quarters will actually make babies, and then we get some more people for our uh, for our world, which is really cool. So we can go through, and we can actually go through these guys one by one, like this, and actually just show you guys every single one. So we know, for example, this guy's going to be good in a P room, 
A is good, L is luck, so that's kind of not as important. But if you want to be really efficient and not worry too much about that, we can just drag and it will tell you a different number when you bring this person up. So for example, they're going to do well in, uh, not so well in any of the other rooms apart from the diner and the water treatment they give two. So what we're going to do is we're going to give that person a chance to work in there. And then this person is just going to go in the diner because apparently they're going to be useful in the diner. Uh, we've got this person is only going to be useful in water treatment, so we're going to put them in there. Uh, oh, that's the wrong person there. We're going to try and grab somebody else. Here we go. Uh, we've got this person who's very good in water treatment, so we're going to do that. We've assigned two dwellers in the right room, which has given us a uh, achievement. Now, achievements, while that's come up, I'll show you, are in here. Uh, and essentially what you can do is either get caps or you can also get, which is really exciting, lunch boxes. And lunch boxes are the unlocks. And it's the way that you can pay money to get like slightly better at this game. But you don't need it at all. It's not a required thing whatsoever. The really cool thing is that you get them, as I said before, whilst we're doing objectives. Um, and it unlocks cards which give you certain benefits. And what we're going to do is we're going to unlock one of these rooms. Uh, and we're going to actually unlock our own lunchbox in a little while. But first we need to get this last person inside our vault here. He's actually really good at working in the diner. So there we go. We now have two people in water treatment, two people in the power generator room. One of them obviously is not really supposed to be working in here, so we can actually change this around. And as you can see, if we go to the water treatment room, this person has a better P attribute than the, one of the people that work in there right now. So if we move them, you can see that this person is switching out into a different room. And they've actually switched out into the power generator room and are also making more resources. So that actually was a win-win situation there. The only thing we don't have is somebody upstairs. So I'm going to just have a little look around and see who has a good C stat. And surprisingly enough, we don't have anybody really at all who has a good C stat. The best person is probably good old Brian here. Um, so we're not going to do that right now, but essentially if I put a guy into the living quarters there, there's a chance of success of making a baby and then we can get that baby to grow up. And essentially that's kind of like one of the ways of getting new people into your, uh, your area, your vault. The other ways are doing a couple of different things. One thing that you can do is get a radio room to call out for other, other dwellers to come and join your vault. Uh, another way of doing it is just to have people turn up by chance. Uh, and there's also a special people that you can get through cards as well that are in the lunch boxes, which again, we'll show you guys a little bit later on. Now, as you can see here, we just got another guy called Joshua. And in fact, he is probably going to work out. He's minus one if we switch out anybody in S or P. Uh, the diner, he's zero, but he can go in here. He's two in the living quarters. So actually now there is going to be two people working in the living quarters, which means we may get a baby, which is good news. Uh, so that's the real kind of crux of the game. It's surprisingly addictive. We need to level up one de one dweller and successfully rush one room. Now, obviously, we can we don't need to rush anything right now because we have quite a lot of um, resources in power, food, and water. Like you can see up the top there. But if we go in and quickly do a rush anyway, because if we successfully complete a rush here, we'll actually get ourselves a lunchbox. So let's see what happens. It was successful, which is great, and actually. We can reclaim that, and now we have got ourselves our very first lunchbox, which we can take a look at. There's another person who's just visiting now, who we can just quickly grab and say, yeah, you can come and work in, it looks like, actually, the diner. Uh, the, the vault is full of dwellers. Build more living quarters. Okay, so we've got to build our first room. If we go into the build menu, go to living quarters, press build, we can actually put that down here. And this is going to give me a chance to talk to you about merging. Now, merging is a way of building two or three rooms of the same type next to each other to achieve a bonus. It's quite cool. The way it works is essentially you do what I'm doing right now and just build another room adjacent to the one that you had already. And as you can see, that room has doubled up and it gives you more resources having two rooms together than having two single rooms of the same type elsewhere. Uh, we've also managed to level up a dweller there as well, which surprisingly enough, means we get another lunchbox. So we've got two lunchboxes to open now on camera, which is great. And as you can see, we've got this lovely person who we can bring in now and say, yep, you can go and work in the diner, which means there's a person in the diner who's being replaced. This person here who's walking out. And that person is actually 
going to be useful for? I'm not even sure what they're going to be useful for. Let's have a look. Uh, really nothing, to be honest with you. So we can just put them in the living quarters or we can put them on guard duty in the main room, which I think is quite a cool thing to do. So, as you can see, it's a nice straightforward game. Good for the iPhone. Good for playing whilst you're like waiting for a bus or, or whatever. I, I tend to find myself playing it if I'm parked up and waiting for somebody or whatever. Uh, and in fact, we can just open these two chests here to show you. Chests, I say chests, lunchboxes, they're pretty much the same thing. All you do is you drag them down here. They cost, I think it's about 59p per one or 99 cents or whatever it is. Um, but you always are guaranteed a rare item. So for example, we've got a very powerful laser rifle, some rad away, some caps, a big amount of caps actually, and a flamer. So we got three rare items in that one chest, which is great. That uh, means we've got some good weapons to keep raiders at bay, which is something you have to do. Uh, take out rads, um, boom, what are they called? Radiation rats or something? I can't remember. Uh, rads, rad roaches? Yeah, rad roaches. There you go. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, and uh, also, sometimes you do get really, really extremely good items. Uh, which unfortunately we didn't get, but we did get Janet West, who's a person who has quite nice stats, actually. That's pretty cool. Let's click on her over here and see. She's actually got almost full S because she's wearing some military gear, uh, which is incredible. You can actually click on these people and you can check the stats of their uh, their items. Well, you have to actually accept them first. but So you can see now, if I put her into the power generator room, that's going to give us plus seven, uh, which is crazy. And essentially, these numbers that are going up or down, every time I click like this, that gives me a certain amount of that food or whatever it is. Uh, the more those, the higher those numbers, the more chance we get of having some uh, some really decent uh, change in the resources that we have at the top there. But as you can see, because we're playing quite well, we have uh, already got those pretty much maxed out now. So what we've got there is pretty much a decent setup, but. There are things that you can do slightly differently to make this game work much more in your favour. You can delete rooms, which you will be required to do to be able to make this work. But if we go over to, if I click on the main menu here, go into the settings, back to the main menu again, and head over into the vault that I've been working on, you guys will get a good chance to see the sort of progress that I've made. And I've only been playing this game for probably, I'd say, about three or four days just sort of on and off, not really touching it all the time. Uh, and I've managed to make some, some pretty good progress. Uh, one of the th other things that you can do to get more caps and to get more items and stuff to build a better quality defense is send people out into the wasteland uh, to gather resources for you. I've sent a few people out to do that and they've just got back and I've managed to get myself a nice amount of items. So if we have a little look inside here, just need to quickly click on all my buildings to get some good gear here. Fantastic, there we go. Right, okay, so as you can see, all the rooms that can be are three wide, which is the biggest that you could possibly get. You can then specifically upgrade these rooms as you go if you want to. As you can see, I've already upgraded the radio room there because that is uh, the way that I'm getting people to come down to me. And in 43 minutes, I should find somebody else because we have a full house working in there right now. We also have a weights room just down here, which I've recently built. I haven't finished that yet. It needs one more to be built, which means I have to take out this rock just here. But you can see these four fine strapping young men here are actually currently all focusing on trying to improve their S stat which is the one that we want to try to work on now this person here clearly is very unhappy about doing weight lifting so what we're going to do with them is actually just change them and move them into a different place and it looks like actually they're going to be either used in the diner or probably in the living quarters and i'm going to say for now we'll put him into the diner because that's going to make him a bit more happy because currently he is very sad as you can see this person in four minutes is going to have an upgrade this person in two minutes, I think for dinner, I'll have a big steak. What about you? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, uh, so yeah, and essentially, these rooms on this side of the elevators that I've got here can't actually be made into a size 3, um, which is a shame. But what I can do is I can actually put an elevator in this, just enough room on the right-hand side for elevators. So what I'm going to have is two sets of elevators running all the way down right the way down as, as far as I, I play the game and that means that anybody on the far right hand side isn't going to have to run all the way back to the elevators to go down an upper floor they can actually just use the elevators on the other side which I think is pretty cool 
So, that's essentially the game. It's a lot of fun, and hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed watching today. Don't forget that if you want to see more iPhone games played on the CAFCast, do make sure that you like the video, uh, and also leave comments on this video that you're watching right now, letting me know of any other games that you might think are really worth taking a look at, because I'm more than happy to spend some time working on other games with you guys. I really like the idea of playing games on the iPhone with you. It seems to be quite a nice little setup that we've got going in, and hopefully you guys agree. So until next time, guys, I've been Caf of the CAFCast. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. You've been watching the CAFCast. We hope you have enjoyed the show. Don't forget Get to check out all of our other videos. Oh, and be sure to subscribe to us if you like what you see. That way I'll know to make more and that you really like me. So, you've been watching the Kefcast. We hope you have enjoyed the show. Don't forget. Get to check out all of our other videos.